there! This lesson is all about volume. Volume fills up space. So think of a jug of milk. Or any other three-dimensional object that is filled up with something. And that something can be measured in little tiny cubes. The full definition of volume is the amount of space occupied by a solid. Now, there are two different types of solids um, that if you distinguish between them, it'll be easier for you to uh, calculate the volume. Um, the first is a prismatic shape, so a prism. Here's an example of a prism. A prism basically has the same end faces, the exact same end faces, and is just basically a transformation of them. So it's an extension. You take the base and move it upwards and you have a prism. So think of a loaf of bread. If you had a loaf of bread, it starts with a little slice and then you keep adding more slices and if you can imagine keep adding more slices you get full loaf of bread. So a loaf of bread is actually a prismatic shape. You start with the base and you continue on up until you get the height and the top is usually the same as the bottom. That's a prism. And if you think about what I just did with the bread, a prism in general, the volume can be found by taking the base multiplied by the height. So the, your base area multiplied by the height will give you the volume of a prism, any given prism. The base area can change and that's what will change your formula. The other shape uh, that can be considered is a pyramid and a pyramid actually fits into a prism. So if you had a base um, that made a prism, you could also make it a pyramid. If you took a loaf of bread, the first bottom slice, say it's a square for our purposes, rather than making it a prism into a loaf of bread, you could take all three parts into sorry, into one point and make a pyramid. And it has been proven that a pyramid is one-third of its prism volume, which is base area times height. If you look on YouTube, uh, there's lots of demonstrations of um, water being filled into a pyramid versus a prism, etc. Pyramid is actually a solid um, that has some sort of base, that's a polygon, and it's lifted up to a point and all its faces there would become triangles because of how it's created. But in general, this is the important part, is that any given pyramid is always one-third of its prism volume. Very important. You'll see that when we develop the next uh, set of formulas and uh, you'll just see that recurring over and over. So let's uh, look at developing some volume formulas. Start with a rectangular prism, meaning a box. You start with a rectangle, lift it up, and you get a box. It's a prism because both sides are the same top and bottom. So same, same idea, we find the base area, which in this case would be length times width. That would give us the amount of little squares filling up that space. So length times width would give us the base area. And multiply that by the number of levels you have and that will give you how many little cubes you have. So multiply that by the height. Length times width times height gives you the volume of a box. Volume of a cylinder. A cylinder is actually a circular prism. If you think of it, you're starting with a circle, lifting it all up, 
not to a point, but just straight up lifting it up. So same idea, you're taking the area of the base times the height because it's a prism. And the base area can be found by taking the area of a circle, which is pi r squared times the height, giving you the volume of a cylinder. Volume of a cone. Now a cone has a circular base, but it goes to a point, making it a pyramid. Now if you remember, pyramids are always one-third of the prismatic volume, which would be base area times height. So let's take that. If our radius here is r and our height is h. So the volume of our cone would be one-third times the base area. Now the base area is a circle and therefore is pi r squared and then times the height. So it's one-third pi r squared h is our volume formula for the cone. Rectangular pyramid. Well, that just means you start with a rectangle, which has base length and width. Take it to a point. And because it's a pyramid, it's always one-third times its base area times its height. And therefore, that gives you one-third times base area length times width times the height, giving you one-third length times width times height as the volume formula of a rectangular pyramid. Next up, we have the volume formula for a sphere. So the sphere is a ball with a radius. And um, unlike the prism or the pyramid, um, it doesn't follow the traditional pattern of base times height. Uh, the volume is actually calculated using calculus. And so therefore, we will have to commit this formula to memory. So volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So here's the volume formula given, and if you want to check out how it's formulated, you can go on YouTube and uh, research how the volume formula works. However, for the purposes of this class, uh, you can stick to using 4 thirds pi r cubed. Let's take a look at some examples. Um, this example, oh, that should say 7 centimeters right there. This example here wants us to find the volume of a tube. So it's composing two different cylinders. We've got the big cylinder that has diameter 7. And then we've got the little cylinder with diameter 5 centimeters that is cut out of the big cylinder. So essentially, you need to take the volume of the big one minus the volume of the little one, giving you the end result of just the outer part, the outer shell, which is called a tube in this case. The heights are 12, same height for both. Now, if you think of uh, the cylinder formulas, the volume of the cylinder of a cylinder is the base, which is pi r squared, because it's a circle, times the height, and that's it. Remember, the pyramid would have been one-third base times height. So we need the radius. We can't use the diameter. This is the diameter. You can't use that. You need to actually find the radius. So half of the diameter is 3.5 centimeters is the radius for the big one. The small one is 2.5. So volume of the big one is 3.14 times pi, or that was pi, times 3.5. So 
squared. That's pi r squared. And then we still have to multiply by height. Height, which gives us 12. If you find that number, that'll give you the volume of the amount of little tiny cubes filling up this big cylinder. And then you've got uh, same thing, but for a different measurement here. So we'll have 3.14 times 2.5 squared times 12. Pi r squared h. So let's just uh, plunk that through in our calculator and check it out. 3.414 times 3.5 squared times 12 gives us 461.58 and 3.14 times 2.5 squared times 12 gives us 235.5 this is all in cubic units so let's make that subtraction big one minus the smaller one giving us 226 point zero eight centimeters cubed. Next example, this one uh, is a cylinder with half a sphere on top. If you want, you can pause the video, try it on your own, and check if uh, it worked out for you. Volume of a cylinder with radius 2 and height 4 plus volume of the sphere with radius 2, but it's half the sphere. Volume of a cylinder is base times height, so pi 2 squared h and and we've also got half a sphere. Now the sphere volume was 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that was a formula to commit to memory, but we're taking half of it. Remember of is signified by a multiplication. You could either divide by two or multiply by a half. And if you're comfortable with simplifying fractions, uh, you could cancel the two and the four and get uh, two-thirds. And if you don't follow that, don't worry about it. Just type in 1 divided by 2 times 4 divided by 3 times pi times the radius cubed. So we're going to do that. And let's plunk that into the calculator. So 3.14 times 2 squared times 4 gives us 50.24. 1 divided by 2 times 4 divided by 3 times 3.14 times 2 cubed gives us 16.75 rounded. I rounded, uh, it was 7, 4, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6 repeated. So the 6 bumped the 4 to a 5. Add those up and you get 66.99. Nine meters cubed. You could round that to 67 meters cubed because that's very close. Depends on what uh, the example states. Uh, it hasn't stated anything, so that is fine. Last question here. Um, how many cubic inches are in one cubic foot? Think about that. Pause the video and uh, consider what you would answer. So we know uh, one foot is 12 inches, just like that. One square foot is going to be how many square inches? Well, it'll be 12 by 12, which is 144. Now let's make a cubic. So it'd be 12 by 12 by 12, forming a cube and hence why we call it a cubic. One cubic foot would be 12 times 12 times 12, 12 cubed, which is 1,728 cubic inches.